trends do you see in the coal industry? Do you think its cost advantage will outweigh its environmental impact? Well, I think in the short term, the world's going to use more coal. If you shut down the coal-generated uh, utilities in the United States, you know, this, we would not be able to hold this meeting in a room with the, with the lights on. It's a very tough problem uh, to solve or to, to even make big inroads on in a short period of time. We are dependent a lot on on, on coal. It's, it's cleaner coal than it was 20 years ago, but, uh, and we will be dependent on it for a long time. Well, I think the people who are very against the use of coal should reflect which one they'd rather use up fast the uh, hydrocarbons, the oil and natural gas, or the coal. I would rather use up the coal because it's less desirable as a chemical feedstock for, for what we need to feed the world. And so I would argue that there's, a, there's an environmental reason in terms of humankind for being very pro-coal use. Most people don't think that way. But I do. Right now we're building coal plants in the country, we're building gas plants, we're doing various things. If we get another 200 years of economic growth pretty well dispersed over the world, while the population of the world also goes up, all of the oil, coal, natural gas, and uranium reserves of the world are, are like nothing. So eventually, of course, you have to use the sun. There is no other alternative. And I think we can confidently predict that there'll be some pain in this process of adjusting to a different world. Personally, I think it's extremely stupid to use up the hydrocarbon reserves of the world as fast as we are. I don't think we've got any good substitutes for those things as chemical feedstocks. And I think it's perfectly crazy to, to use up something so precious for which you have no alternative uh, that's sure to be available. And if you look at it backwards, what should we have done? Hell, we should have bought all the oil in the 30s in the Middle East and taken it over here by tankers and put it in our own ground. I mean, it's, it's obvious to see what should have been done in the past. Even though that's obvious, are we doing the equivalent of that now? And the answer is basically no. Uh, so I think the governmental policy tends to be way behind in terms of rationality. And uh, I think we'll just have to soldier through. But eventually, the, if we're going to have a prosperous civilization, we have no other alternative than the sun. Don't ever give up on, on humans' ability to innovate in ways that, that create solutions to problems that seem insolvable. We've, we've faced all kinds of predictions. We haven't really started. I mean, if, if you could pick a time in history when you would want to be born, leaving out the nuclear, chemical, and biological threat, which is something to leave out, but, you know, I would pick today, you know. I, I, it, uh, the world has a bright future. We need the oil and the gas and the coal eventually for chemical feedstocks more than we need it for keeping warm and propelling our vehicles. Obviously, you're dealing with a finite resource. If there's enough energy, you can always get enough clean water. With enough energy, well, you, you have, the water problem goes away. I think one of the main reasons for being restrained in the use of hydrocarbons is that modern agriculture won't work without them. I'm a great believer in being conservative in terms of blowing all the hydrocarbons on heating houses and running cars. It's probably quite wise to use up the other fellow's hydrocarbons while preserving our own. Certainly. It's not going away. You can't change. I mean, the installed base is so huge when you get into electricity generation that you can't really change the percentages too much. Certainly in the future you're going to see uh, a diminution in the percentage of electricity uh, generated from 
coal in this country, but it, it, it won't be dr dramatic because it can't be dramatic. You just can't, the megawatts involved are just too huge. My view is that the single most precious resource of the United States are its hydrocarbon reserves. I have the exact opposite idea on this subject from most people. And of course, I think I'm right. <laughs> no, and I think what's happen, happening now is, to use your word, it's idiotic. We are using up a precious resource, which we need to create fertilizer and so forth, and sparing a resource which is precious, but not as precious, which is thermal coal. If I were running the United States, I would use up every ounce of thermal coal before I'd touch a drop of natural gas. But that's, the conventional view is exactly the opposite. I think those natural gas reserves we've just found are the most precious things we could leave our descendants. I'm in no hurry to use it up. And, I, and the gas is worth more than the coal. If you own a railroad, it's carrying a lot of coal. Uh, it'll, it'll carry a lot of coal for a long period, a very long period. I think a lot of the people who think they know how climate change is going to change weather patterns and hurricanes are overclaiming. I think well, there's a class of people who like the idea they've got a calamity to worry about. I think that all the hydrocarbons will be used, including all the coal. In the end, these hydrocarbons are a huge resource for humanity, and I don't think we've got any good substitute. I've never minded saving them for the, the next generation. I don't like using them up very fast. I'm off on a little road on my own on this one. People think that all this hydrocarbons are going to be stranded and the whole world's going to change. I think we're going to use every drop of the hydrocarbons sooner or later. We'll use them as chemical feedstocks. People that are on the extremes of both sides are, are a little nuts. <laughs> I, I, I would hate to have all the hydrocarbons banned in three years, or I, and you, you know, you wouldn't want a world, it wouldn't work. There's something about every business that if you knew what you wouldn't like. I have a different view on this subject. Nobody else has my view, so I, it doesn't bother me. I just think they're all wrong. It is something that everybody has a feeling on immediately, and, and uh, uh, you know, this gets into, uh, a whole bunch of different uh, tribes of sorts, and, and you offend an awful lot of people if you talk in any way about it. We're using a lot of it, and if we were to try and change over in three years or five years, it, 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 I, I, nobody knows what would happen, but, but the odds that it would work well are extremely low, it seems to me. Letting you buying coal would be like going out and seeking to what, acquire a cancer or something. You can't even borrow to expand a coal mine now. It's really, it got very unfashionable. We think, frankly, some of the things that are ridiculous. And on both sides, on both, uh, in, in both extremes. I mean, it's just, I mean, you're dealing with physics, you're dealing with, um, you know, it, it's the politicization of of positions on something that's enormously important in terms of energy is just, uh, it, it just lends itself to, to demagogues and, and fundraisers and advisory organizations and everybody in sight.